one thing that's like come up time and time again, give an example of your working week, Mr. Beard, your working week, eating food. What does your days look like? You know, like, yeah, I'll, I'll address this real quick. Preach, right? brother. It's, it's, it's not interesting, right? Or maybe Mike can throw up, but I'll give Mike a really crudely drawn graphic, which I use all the time, which is like a basic little line graph to show people an average week for you me, right? Pain, yeah. So that you can visualize how I don't get fat basically. Right. So people always ask me that. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a really simple mathematical equation. So I know step one of getting in shape or losing fat or whatever you want it to be um, should be, you know how many calories you need at your current activity level to stay in shape. Um, uh, sorry, to, to stay at the same weight. Um, and uh, you can work that out by trial and error. Just get weighed every morning. If you're eating the same amount of food, roughly it's the same uh, number of calories every day um, and you're getting weighed. If your weight's going up, you're eating too much. If your weight's going down, you're eating too little. Um, and that uh, you can use like, a, you know, a My Fitness Pal. I know a lot of people don't do it. It's still considered weird to track your food intake, but I mean, that's that's why there are fuel gauges on petrol, you know, on cars. So you know how much petrol to put in it. So yeah, My Fitness Pal is really easy or any of the tracking apps. Once you've got how much you need, so I need about 3000 calories a day, maybe a shade less these days. That's mad that for your size, not to set up out, you've been small again, but that seems like a lot of calories to maintain your weight. It yeah, seems- I mean, the, the, like, the, the guidelines are really, really, Vague, aren't they, though? Yeah. Like if, an adult is two and a half thousand. Two and a half thousand yeah. calories. That's going to be an two. An adult male and then an adult female is like 2,200. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, I mean, like, that, that's, that, could, that could vary wildly, you know? Absolutely, like, yeah. if you've got an Olympic athlete out there, he's going to be in, there was a, you know, the famous Michael Phelps diet, which I think they debunked years later, but it turned out he was still eating like 8,000 calories a day. So, I mean, he was absolutely shredded because yeah. he's in a fucking pool all day swimming, right? Yeah. I'm not quite at that level, right? But I do resistance training, even though I'm skinny, right? What, what mass is on my body is predominantly, there's not a great deal of fat as Josh attested to uh, earlier. Um, and I walk a lot, like I walk like a lot every day. Like I walk five, I don't like- Can you the, just, sorry, can, can you break down your resistance training? So like a, a week of seven days in, in a, a week, what what does your movement look like in the in the gym before we start talking about walking? All right, okay, cool. Um, but it's just, it's really boring. That's, that's why I didn't want to get into it. It's basically um, compound. People, people will be well interested, you know, like- Yeah, I, I, so. I, a lot of people ask me, they'll be like, do a training video. <laughs> Tommy, um, just really boring compound movements. It'll be the, the, the number of times in a week I train varies. Usually it's five days, sometimes four, depending on my training block. Like I'm, if I'm doing like a real, uh, if I'm going for like some PRs, right? So yeah. if I'm trying to like a one rep max or something on a particular lift for whatever reason, I might train four times that w- week. So the volume's reduced. So your performance is higher because you're going for like one max set rather than, you know, two or three, whatever. Um, you know, we basic compound movements with a barbell since COVID, right? I don't even go to the gym anymore. I've got my home gym, which is a half power rack in my in my garage yeah. at home with a, an Olympic bar, about 160 kilos worth of weights, which is going to be enough for anything I need to do apart from maybe a deadlift. And I haven't done conventional deadlift in ages because yeah, you don't necessarily need to do it, yeah. but it'll be, you know, um, a standing military press, shoulder press, yeah. uh, weighted chin ups, um, you know, bench, incline bench, um, squat some variation of a deadlift some kind of hip hinge like uh maybe a romanian deadlift or something like that yeah your basics which would should be in any strength training program and it's not like i'm not coming out of the gym sweating you know it's it's a really kind of smart in my my mind scientific approach to training because i don't train to be massive you know yeah. or and i don't train to look a certain way i train to be healthy and as pound for pound strong as i could be i'm not saying i'm like a strong dude or anything but um relative to my body weight I just want to be practically strong and healthy. Yeah. Right? And it's a byproduct of that, that I don't look like shit basically. Right. <laughs> so I'm in reasonably good shape. Yeah. Um, and, but because of that, if you resistance training, if you have more muscle mass than the average person, let's say Mike, um, <laughs> walking, <laughs> walking the, uh, walking the street, then of course I'm going to need to consume more calories to stay the same weight. Right. Yeah. Than say Mike would. Yeah. yeah. And you add to that, you, your activity level, if I like back in the day when I, there was a point in my life when I was eating like 36, 3,700 calories a day when I was larger and I was playing football four times a week, you know, and I was in the gym every six days a week. So it, that changed. But for me, it's about, it's probably a bit, a bit less, maybe 2,800 a day. Yeah. Do you do, um, um, do you do isolated movements like, you know, bicep curl dips? Like, do you do isolated movements for, for certain muscle groups? Uh, yeah. So bicep curls are an isolation movement. Dips aren't, but, um, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I meant more but, like um, the tricep. Yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that. That's just accessory work to yeah. me. So if you have a weak link in a compound movement, that might be something that's like, you know, a bicep curl. But I don't do a great deal of bicep. Like probably one of my, if people look at me, they might think, oh, 
with a t-shirt on, they might think, oh, this guy's cool and all, you know, not that I have massive arms, yeah. but the one area that I mean, that looks reasonably developed, I do, I very, don't, I barely curl at all. Like it's mostly from doing chin-ups and pull-ups. Would you, do you split your week in, so like a, a simplified way to break down your compound movement, which could be like push, pull, legs. Yeah. That's, that could be a good split, you know, to, to rotate and then do your accessory movements on top of that. Yeah. So your push would be a chest bench press, incline chest, I guess. And then you could work on your triceps because that would be in the, again in a push movement where on a cable or a dip yeah um, i mean but for, for i think for most people if you st- if you get especially if you're getting started out if you're a rookie you could do even like just full body training like a lot of um old school you know famous bodybuilders and whatnot would train three times a week full body full body you know right. but I, I think these days if people know with modern science if you get to a certain level that you probably should be splitting your training up just into you know but any training is better than nothing like i'm, I'm, I'm talking here not to you know bodybuilders and professional athletes were essentially doing this for the sake of people that maybe are a bit tentative to get into it and they don't yeah, live the yeah. lifestyle. So for people like that, just move, man, just do some kind of exercise. And you should probably, even though it is to some people intimidating, do some kind of resistance training, not because you're going to get so people, a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to get too bulky or I don't want to be in that environment. I get that. But it, resistance, I mean, look at me for God's sake, man, I, I spend a lot of time not a lot of time, but some some effort training, right? And yeah. I've been doing it a long time. And most people probably can't even tell that train, you know, to look at me. And there's nothing special about it, but I'm far healthier probably than a yeah. person, or certainly than a person that doesn't train it. I have mean, better posture and things like that. And it'll serve me well with connective tissue and all that into older age. Like my, my grandma, man, her knees are fucked. And I, I'm, I'm sure like most old people are. But a big part of that is the fact that when my grandma was younger, they didn't, they couldn't train, you know, they, yeah, got, yeah. Or they, they, they didn't know how to train, you know? So I think another thing you said, uh, like training smart with longevity would be, I know you said you do, you do attempt sometimes to go to for one rep max as if you are cert- training for a certain, whatever you're trying to do in your, that's your personal thing. But uh, I know I've heard Rogan talk about it on his podcast where, you know, why don't train every day to a hundred percent because yeah, yeah. You, you'll, you will be written off for a couple of days afterwards with, Dom's delayed onset muscle soreness. We've all had it where you go back and do chest for the first time and you're like, somebody flicks you on the chest and it's, the, <laughs> it's absolute agony. Whereas like if you'd have gone, a, you know, let's say you can you can ch- chest press a 30 kilo dumbbell in each arm. If you'd have done 20 and just repped out the, got the movement isolated nicely, but not pushed it too far, you could then train the next day. And like, I think that's, that goes yeah. back to that consistency, doesn't it? I mean, those, those are all like a, as well advanced techniques. There's a point where you, you if you're chasing performance, so like getting stronger, you can't just be smart. It's not just, there's this, this I think, common theme in, in amongst exercises. It's like, you know, like blood, sweat and tears and you got to train until you, you don't. Like I barely, I, I barely even leave my, the gym when I train in the morning with a sweat on. Yeah. Barely ever, you know, and even that extends to cardio as well. You don't have to be doing HIIT training. I fucking hate high intensity interval training. That's why I walk for a long, long time. Yeah, so let's move on to that then, Max. That's what I'm going to ask you next was what is your, I guess, cardio? What's your... I mean, I, I, I don't even, I, to me, I don't call it cardio. No. I hate I hate even the term, you know, because you should just do some kind of movement, something which gets you out of the house and gets you um, exposed to some sunlight, a bit of vitamin D. Right. Uh, it's, it's kind of weird that I'm so pale, actually, given that I spend enough time. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's something that you, that isn't prohibitive to you, right? So like if, if somebody told me I have to do like sprints, hill sprints or something like really strenuous every day of the week or like four times a week, I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't want to do it, right? Yeah, but there's more way with cardiovascular exercise, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? So you, it might be for you, like if you don't have much time in the day, you work shifts or whatever, or like say to you say to me, I've only got half an hour to train a day. All right, well then maybe it's better for you to do like some kind of circuit or something yeah, like that. It's yeah, better yeah. than nothing. Get it in, yeah. Um, so then that might appeal to some people, 10 minutes of hit training. To me, what, what appeals to me is going out, putting my headphones on, enjoying some music and walking around somewhere reasonably scenic, like down the river or whatever, go for a long walk, get a bit of a sweat on. And you know, that, that, for heart health, that's that's really all you, all you all you need to do, you know? If you're training for something more specific, like fitness in a sport, like if I want to start playing football again, obviously you're going to have to put, but I don't mind that. Like if you, when you play fo- a sport, there's some reason be- behind the output, yeah, right? So yeah. if, you, if you're knackered, there's a reason for it. I can't think of anything worse than getting on a treadmill and just sprinting for, you know, 15 minutes. No, I agree with that. Um, but yeah, you don't have to, you know, you, re- you really don't have to just move a bit. The, po- the problem with most people is it's completely sedentary. So we mentioned 2,500 calories a day. That's going to be too much for some adults because they, especially now with the, working at home, yeah. you wake up in the morning, like I've, I've seen Lynn's, right? I've seen some days wake up in the morning, work the morning from bed, 
Don't don't uh, <laughs> should we get in trouble with the bosses? We'll right? that out. Well, yeah, working from a uh, fr- from, from the home. bed or at the most getting up. And even if you even if you work from the office, drive to the office, park at the office, get in the lift up, up yeah, to yeah, the yeah, floor. You're yeah. on office all day, home, Netflix, bed. Yeah, no. Where, where's the output really? Uh, very little. So just move a bit, man. And move a bit more. That's that, the yeah. Yeah, we've known that since antiquity. Though look at all those ancient Greek statues that are in great shape. Yeah. And they know how to do it. It's not complicated.